What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Nessa Nanas, and you know I'm back on The Real, The Ratchet, and The Reckless. Guys, I'm super excited because, as you can see, I got the one and only old school mentality. What's, up, What's what good? Let do? me give you some love. It's all good. All right, it's all, all right. Too good. We're going to just jump right in. If you know, we always start with the Ratchet Spark. <laughs> and I hope you get prepared. My Ratchet Spark for today is a lyric from Nipsey Hussle. All right, let's I do it. I seen it, I thought it, I dreamed it, and I meant it. Which is a lyric from That's How I Knew. And that's the lyric that I always uh, say every single day to speak my dreams into existence. And one more time. It. Say it one more time. I seen it. I thought it. I meant it. I dreamed it. Nice. And what does that mean to you? What that means to me is I started from the bottom and, you know, took the motivation to speak, in, speak my dreams into existence. Mm -hmm. And each day, day in and day out. I just took the time out to do my um, processing with, you know, reaching my goals. And what that means is, you know, overall to me is that, you know, I reached my goals and I finally spoke them into existence after, you and know. And we see that. If yeah. you don't follow him, we're going to put it somewhere under here. Old school. It's an uh, old school underscore mentality, yes. right? Old school if you don't know, now mentality. you know. If you are South Central LA, baby, you know who he is. So I think the first time we met was at the South Central by South Central um, block party, yep. right? You that were there. The first do you remember me? Yep, I remember. All right, cool. It, it feels good giving back to the community, and I feel that you do that through your photography. So let's get a little bit in depth. You know, if you don't know, or if you already checked out his Instagram, we know that Jay do photography, like amazing, unique. Yep, street yes. photography since 2011. Damn, that is a minute. Started when I was 16. Dang. So let's just dive into that because that's obviously we want to know when, how, why. So it all started off when my mom used to take pictures at uh, family events, mm -hmm. and she had a little uh, Kodak camera that she would carry around. So hey, if you know, you know, right? You I don't know, think these kids nowadays you know. know. You know. <laughs> and eventually, she put she um she pulled the camera and just you know passed it on to me, and then I just randomly started taking pictures in downtown LA and South Central. I would write the blue line all the time, the green line, Ooh, and the just blue line. walk around all the time, just taking random pictures because I really didn't know what I was doing at the time, and I didn't yeah. really have a clear vision. But when, well, you know you liked it. Yeah, I knew I liked it, and I thought to myself every day, there's got to be a calling or a purpose for me doing this. Yeah. But I just didn't know it at the time. And then come 2013, 2014, I would go to Crenshaw Boulevard every Sunday to see all the lowriders cruising up and down from Coliseum all the way down to Vernon. And that's what really got me into the whole photography scene and pushed me to do more. And then come 2014, that's when I started jumping into the scene and going to uh, shows when I could, you know, every other weekend. And yeah, because they're usually Sundays, right? Yeah, usually Sundays. Sometimes Saturdays, Fridays, but usually everything happens on, on a Sunday. Sunday. Nice. And you know what's funny? Um, just like a quick fun fact. I grew, my dad was in a car club, so it's like when I when oh. I, yes, yeah. and I remember that it was my dad's shit, and he had like a it was like a it was a blue Impala, right? And it was right. it's like rounded. I don't know what year that was, but I know the corners are rounded, and I think I have a picture somewhere. But I think that's what also drew me to your photography that is I could also connect with it and it gets me so excited and it was so funny because even before I followed you um you know I'm around the neighborhood so every time on Crenshaw and Adams like when I'm on Crenshaw and Adams right. um I always it's usually Sundays when I see all of them putting up and I'm like and it just gives me like that feeling like back in the days when I was a kid and I think that's also why I connect with your with your page it makes me feel like you know a little nostalgia like damn right. that's what I was about to say that nostalgic feeling that yeah. you get when you see him that's how it would be for me even if I wasn't at a function I would just be on Broadway or Figueroa just yeah, running some errands and then I see a low rider I'd recognize somebody from a club that I know where I just you know get out my phone camera yeah and I'm saying you ran into YG and Nip what year was Nip that you ran into Nip Nip was just a few weeks before he passed when he oh, had wow. he debated his um his hats he had some California love hats mm -hmm. and then he was pulling up and then I just happened to be standing there and then he had opened up his car door for just a second and I was able to zoom in and get his picture real quick when he was trying to talk to somebody. 
Damn. And thank you again for that. I'm going to show my surprise later because I'm more than honored. No problem. To have received that. Um, but your work is quality. Let me just, yeah, I'm sure you know that already. Sometimes it like takes people to tell you and it's like people will tell you, but it's not till you truly believe it. So I also, yeah. you know, you need, it's important for us as creators um, and artists to know that we own it. And you need to know that, that you, you running that shit. Like, it's yeah. dope. It's fucking dope. It's very important for us to know that because, you know, sometimes as a photographer, we do get discouraged from, you know. Really? Yeah, we do get discouraged sometimes. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, when you try to do a project or, you know, create a project, sometimes what we do is we don't really plan it out. And then we have to uh, set ourselves back and then, you know, plan out the step by step what project we have and then speak it into existence so it comes out the way we wanted it to. Yeah, so when you know how you say you run into shit because you're all, and you and you be taking the bus and the train, that's like you get all the good shit. Yeah. <laughs> what is wait, actually? What is the craziest shit you've seen on the blue line? Because I know the blue line could be ratchet. Well, it is ratchet. Yeah, it's the What's ratchetest the- line on the entire metro system. <laughs> okay, so there tell was me, one time me. where I was at Florence Station and I'm waiting uh-huh. for the northbound train to go back towards downtown. Mm-hmm. Southbound trains coming on the other side, and then the doors open up, and it's two people fighting on there. Oh, and then right when you about to get on, not on that particular train, but like you just started right there, and it's yeah, like yeah, I just seen it right there, <laughs> and then I see a dude who's selling roses, who was a hustler. He on there fighting somebody else. His roses flying everywhere. Yeah, roses <laughs> flying everywhere on the train yeah, it gets crazy on the train especially because i feel like it, it, it sometimes it's like congested in there and people be all up in people's business and yeah. too close that it creates like irritation people going to work it's hot it's right. just like it I, creates I, a lot of yes tension. yes you mentioned it can be unmotivating or discouraging as a photographer give me a little bit about the like the lifestyle that you know you said you started young when did you realize that it was a, like it, there's things to this shit it's not just oh i'm pulling out my camera and taking pictures it's not like like that, like you know, when you was young, like eventually right. you got to learn your own craft because, like I said, where we live, there's no resources where it's like, oh, exactly. you know, at school we provide this. It's like you found your passion is now, and now it's up to you to learn, almost learn your passion. Oh, excuse me, get a bird. I, it's aesthetic, aesthetic. Right. <laughs> um. So it's like now you gotta you gotta teach yourself, right? So give me a little bit about that when you, cause I I mean all I know about photography is like I know that. You know, I don't know. Like, you got to take pictures. Lighting matters. Right. Um, the setting. And, you know, also, I feel that not everybody, some people feel, like, either shy. Like, even for me, sometimes, like, if I want to take a picture outside, I'm like, hurry up, bitch. I'm like, because then it's just, <laughs> like, people just looking. It's, I don't know. Give me the whole right. vibe of, like, I'm sure now you're way comfortable. Like, I don't know. I guess it's like you got to get in there to get your shot. Like, how does that, how is that for you? When I first started, I can tell you off the top that, you know, I was a little paranoid getting my shots when I was in the streets. Yeah. You know, because it was still kind of a little crazy back then on the east side when I was doing it when I first started. The moment of truth came for me in 2018 when I was starting to get a little bit bored of the whole lowrider scene. And I had to think about it for a minute. And I thought to myself, okay, like, today's the day where I really need to think about what I'm actually doing. Am I doing this just for fun? Or are we doing this to eventually Get get paid and, you know, get a long-term goal or something going in and speak something into existence. And then I reflected back on when I used to be a street photographer Mm -hmm. and, you know, my roots coming from the low bottoms on the east side of South Central. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize, okay, you know, I started as a street photographer. Like, what should I do next? So what I did is as a way to give back to where I, you know, came from, I decided to take pictures around the neighborhood. Like, I just started walking around where I'm really familiar with where my roots came from. And I would just walk through. I mean, one of the things that stands out to me is just how downtown is just on pretty much every block, you know, around that little yeah. area. Yeah. And then there's another street and that's over on like 43rd and Avalon. It has some beautiful palm trees. And then the crazy part is, is back in 2012, I said, man, I said, it'd be crazy to have a lowrider here and do a shoot. And, you know, I finally got around to some people, you know, met the right people. And I made that happen last year. And, I mean, it was beautiful just to, you know, make that happen after so many years of just thinking about it, you know. And seeing it come to life. And seeing it actually come to life, not once, but, you know, actually twice, because I actually did a a graduation shoot there a few months back, too. I think I've seen it. And that was going to be one of my questions. Like, how do you... 
how do you, you know, how do you, well, I know how you give back, but I obviously wanted people to know that that's your way of giving back to the community. And I fuck with that. Like seeing the accomplishments and the, you're, you're, you're capturing the, the accomplishments and the hustle that there is here. You get me? And it's like right. a lot of people that, and I, and I also feel like thanks to social media that people are seeing other lifestyles, you know, that some of us don't have it like others. And there's always somebody that got it worse than us. Right. Um, but to see the hustle and dedication of South Central and you capturing that is is beautiful. Because what do people just think? Like when you meet people when you're not from here, you go to a nicer area. For example, I I used to, I worked at the Grove. Well, right now I'm not working. But it's like when I meet these guests that sometimes they ratchet, but sometimes they're bougie, right? Mm-hmm. The daytime ones is bougie. Right. The ones that come over for lunch, and um they get to know you and then they're like, Oh, so like, where do you live? I'm like, Oh, like I grew up in South central right now. I stay, you know, by where I stay by. And they're like, Oh, like it's dangerous over there. Or like their, their mentality is negative about where I come from. Right. So the fact that there's social media and you have this platform where you get to show that there's hustle and hard work and dedication. And there's a bunch of us making it and trying to make it is beautiful. That's right. And that's what I love about old school mentality. (laughs) Since we talked about what you give back to the community, what do you expect from your community? Like, what do you want them to know? What do, what do you want them to know about old school mentality? What do you want your little legend thing to be? What I want them to know, number one, is that I'm all about unity. You know, I'm not about being divided. And number two, I'm all about positivity and, you know, seeing my community prosper, not go down. I want to see everybody prosper, even if they prosper before me. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, Jay, I'm Latina, obviously, and I grew up here in South Central, and my community is black and Latinos. And... I mentioned, I say it all the time, I went to school in East LA and it's more Latinos than blacks. Right. Right. So, and, and for you, a lot of people don't feel comfortable. Like, I feel like if I didn't go to school there, you wouldn't pretty, I don't think you'd catch me in East LA to be honest. Um, but because it was beautiful for me to even get to know East LA that it's now, it's like, I'll go there. Right. Right. Cause like, it's beautiful. East LA is dope. Like they got bomb ass food. I just love, and I have good friends from there. Oh yeah. But a lot of people, won't do that. And I feel like when I see you on your Instagram, you always post your location and it's either South Central, East LA. I've seen you in Van Nuys. Like you've been going yeah, everywhere. everywhere. Tell me how is that? And how did that start? Like for you to just be like, fuck it. Like, did you meet, have meet friends? Like how did you, cause sometimes it does take courage to go to other neighborhoods. Honestly. The one thing that it took was there was a cruise on Whittier Boulevard. And They're known for their low rider yeah, shit too. They know. Yes. Whitt- Whittier Boulevard. You know, this was like 2015, and I thought, I said, okay, I'll do something different. And I went to Whittier Boulevard, you know. A lot of people show love that day. You know, I made a lot of friends, and then after that, I just started going whenever they had cruises once a month. And, you know, I just started going places little by little. And then here I was going to East L.A. Here I am going to the harbor area. No. No, I'm so used to riding on these metro buses. You you used to being around everybody. Yeah, so I was used to being around that, going to Van Nuys, going up to San Fernando, uh, the IE, San Diego. It makes me happy to hear that everybody was really welcoming to you. And I think that that's nice. And and you promote that. Like when I go on your page, I, I feel that because I also fuck with it is because it's it's my community like it just feels like where i come from when you post you're black and brown <laughs> pride as fuck and I, a lot of people will sometimes get shade for that like oh you you know and i but i feel like we're in 2020 and it's like bro everybody here if you know you know like we cool like we cool on this side right and the fact that you're even going to east la because with the whole black lives matter movement there was some issues and still is some issues um with the latino community got something to say about it and it makes me feel some type of way because where I'm right. from is not like that. And uh-huh. and you from you from where I'm from, you know? Yeah. And I think it shows a lot for you to pull up over there. And you've been pulling up over there even before all this. And that yeah. also shows a lot. So it's like there's people like us that there's no problem, you know? And like you said, what you promote is positivity and, you know, just people coming together because we're people. Right. And, like, I don't know what the problem is. So I really love that. Is and it's like people sometimes post to post for clout, and it's like yours genuinely looks like you just are united, like you just bring people together. Right, I and see it's genuine a lot of people well. posting for clout, and I'm just yeah. Like, it's like, do you I'm do that on your daily? That. Do you you know? Do you support each other? Do you buy from the elote man when you can? Do you support your right. black owned businesses? Exactly. Are like you not really just, out there? Yes, exactly. And I feel that your photography definitely shows you've been out there. That's dope. Been there, done that. Yes. 
And I want to take it back. I know it should have been the first question, but you grew up in South Central LA. Where did you exactly grow up? Give me a little bit about. I grew up around Vernon Central, around Vernon and Long Beach. At one point, I did move up to uh, Van Nuys, and I was there. And then oh, I was nice. in Bacoima. For hey, you know what's so funny? That it gets a little ratchet over there, too. Like, once you get older and you start, na- like, you know, growing up, you know, we obviously, my family, we don't come from money. It's like we've been here our whole lives. So it's like when you get older to maybe go to college or visit a friend, like, you start seeing other neighborhoods and it's like, oh, shit, like, it's not that different sometimes. Like, it's slightly different with the right. culture and the way they do things over there. But it's like you find people that are just like you or share similar struggles or similarities. Exactly. And it's like, Pacoima, whoo! I found out about them in college. It's like I met people from Pacoima and I was like, dang, we share similar struggles. And exactly. it's not that different from out here, you know? Yeah, I had a barbershop that I've been going to for years in Pacoima, so I know a lot of people out there, and then I got a lot of extended family and blood family members out there. And, you know, during those times when I was living out there, it was probably the most late years that I have been out there. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, just because I know that you're from, you're the same area I'm from, you know, where we come from, was it hard for you to stay out of trouble? Did you go through anything in your life where you feel like you – Something there told you I got another way. I got to go. I can't go this way. Yeah, just hanging out with the uh, wrong crowd and then, you know, not knowing any better about whose neighborhood, who I was in. And when I was in ninth grade, I said, okay, I got to Where'd you go to school? That. I was over there by Jefferson. Oh, yep, on Central. Yeah. By Central, yeah. Dang. And was there anything that you did during school to keep you away from it? Like, oh, basically away from the streets. Like, you in the streets but doing positive shit. Just basically, you know, go to school and get my work done. And, you and know, go straight home. Try my best and go straight home. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I got two. Two. Older, younger? Got a younger one and I got an older one. Nice. So you're in the middle. You're the middle child. Yep, middle child here. Y'all deserve extra attention sometimes. Deserve <laughs> it and ask for it in a weird way. Do you get shit like that, middle child shit? Yeah, I get a lot my of My sister's it. a middle child. She's something else, but she's special. <laughs> no, like really, like. She's everything. So you met a child because y'all got to balance shit and I get it. I get it. I'm the old, I'm the older one. Um, but, uh, is there anything else you feel like you want to talk about this before we move on to the rat, to the red shows? I was going to give an example of, you know, a you story ahead, about how I, you know, got one of my pictures one time. I'll tell you. A, a, oh a yeah. Okay. Let's story. talk about that. So there was one time where I was riding the 45. I was going to the Sunday fun day spot on Broadway a couple years ago. Uh-huh. And I was thinking to myself, man, I said, it would be so dope if I got a, a gas station shot of a bunch of low riders. Just, oh, my know, God. The shell one. Oh, and is uh, it, I like the shell. Is it the shell yeah, one? I it was the shell the one. The colors, on too. Broadway. The colors. By the 110, right? The yeah, low freeways on the corner. That one. Yes. When I look on my right hand side, just as I'm thinking about that, there's Los Angeles Car Club just right there. Beautiful rides all over the place in it was perfect timing because when I crossed the street, there was more coming. So I got the street signs in the background. There was one shot where I got uh, the shell and, you know, it was a 65 Impala that matched yeah. the, the exterior of the shell gas station. Like, that's my uh, favorite set by far. Nice. If you don't know, Old School Mentality does sell his pictures so you can get them printed, right? Yeah. And I had to give mine, seeing them, like, printed. Like, I'm I'm excited. They look right. more beautiful. Seeing them in life is just different from when you see them on online. a phone screen yeah. online. Yeah. I know. And you know what? Again, Jay, like I said, it's, it's, um, it's unique. And I feel like I don't know if there is other people out there doing it, but it's like I feel like what's crazy is that you're known in the neighborhood. Like, every, I feel like you're getting to that point where it's like, you got to know old school mentality. Like, even if I bring it up, they'll be like, oh, yeah. Like, if I say, you know, the one that we posting, like, the car clubs and everything, they're like, like, you're, you're, I'm sorry, but you, you, you getting your name out there. And, and you, did you feel like that was hard for you or it just came naturally? Like, to gain the support? Because basically you networking, you out there physically. It was hard to get it, but you know what? I just said, I don't care how long it takes. I'll just let it all come naturally and genuinely. Like, I don't have to, you know be trying to follow all stuff. these people and do all this extra stuff. I said, I'll just let it come naturally and I'll get better at my craft and I'll see where the opportunities take me. And you know what, uh, Jay, I've always said like, for me, it's like, I rather have like to me numbers. Yeah. Obviously when you get more following, you get excited. Right. But right. for me, it's like, 
you really, I, uh, what makes me feel better is like when I ask myself and what I focus on is like, say I have this certain following and this certain following. I'm like, would that amount really pull up for me? You get me like, right. Would they, it's that's like, the real question. And it's like the way you're saying it, it coming genuinely. I probably feel like for sure for you, you know what I'm saying? But there's people that work so hard to focus on that, that it, at the end of the day is not really good support. And for me, it's like, I don't want to look for it because I don't want to attract shit that I don't fuck with. Cause then it's just right. going to be exactly. negativity around my platform. So and for me, that. and for me, it's like, if you're coming this way it's because you fuck with it. So I, that's the way I am. So if it's like you come in this way and you following, you fucking with the with the whole with the vision, then I respect that because that means you support me. But if I look for it, sometimes when you look, not you, you, you gotta wait for that shit to come to you. Right. And I feel it's like I would rather have you know twenty real supporters than a thousand fake ones. Exactly. You get me or people that are gonna talk about me. And I feel that. You, is is the love you get and what you post and your comments and the interactions that you have with your following is genuine and people fuck with you. All genuine vibes over here. Yeah, that's dope. When you told your like your family, did you tell your family like I want to do this? Did everybody support you? Like, was it a shock or they kind of knew like that's who you've been? They kind of knew that's how I've been, but when they see everything prosper, they were all surprised. Like they're like, oh, we got to get these prints and everything, especially Aww. when they seen that I just the. Uh, debuted at the stickers they were just like oh, we're yes. gonna hang them all on the cars yes <laughs> and it's funny because like sometimes you feel like stickers are like and eh, but then like really it's like no they're dope you could put them anywhere stickers can go anywhere and it's just like also like i said bringing the vision to life like now you know boom old school mentality there you go right exactly shout out to my boy classic brand because he came up with this idea of making a uh logo for me and he backed me up and oh okay and duh. we spoke it to existence and when we got those stickers printed i was like wow this is crazy like yeah and then now anywhere you go you pay something you know you've been there done that i already shot here i already shot here <laughs> right marking my territory you all know, over the metro <laughs> washington boulevard central that's they know right. that's <laughs> right all right cool all right so you already know how it goes on the road ratchet and the reckless we always do bitch yep. what let me see i always got the wrong buttons hold on bitch what <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so for bitch what what you got for me do you want to do a ratch tail or do you want to do i knew she wasn't shit when we're gonna do a ratch tail here today. let me give you a horn <laughs> this better be good this better be juicy this is about to be real good <laughs> tell me this tell comes me. back from my old blue line days you know yes. one day i just happened to be riding around on there it was late i was coming back from minglewood at imperial station was you turning up yeah we was turning up <laughs> one of the homies that you know he's a hustler and he was on there selling the beer and everything and then he was just like you know he yells on with his air horn talking about we're on the party train and i said shit i'm about to turn up and then some other passengers were in the background talking about, let's get a dice game going. I said, oh, shit, I'm with that. Let's go do it. So I got some newspaper, and we laid it down on the floor, and we got dice, and we just started rolling. Turn it. Are you serious? We took over that train car for, How? I want to say, like, three hours that no! night. No! <laughs> From where did you start? What like? When I you started at Imperial. And then to where? I went to 7th and Metro. I think I ended up back to Long Beach. Downtown and, and then back. About maybe four times that night. And everybody on it was fucking with y'all. They stayed on. Yeah, they stayed on just turning up and everything. Like, Dang. train drivers didn't even say That's nothing. That's what I was going to say. Did they catch anything? Were uh -uh. they No? Were you guys in the end, towards the end, the middle, the front? We were towards the end, but it's like, we got the 7th and Metro. They could see, but nobody cared. They're just like, go ahead. Do was it thing. late? Yeah, it was like, maybe like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. How many of y'all do you think was in there? It was like 15 of us. No! Was there music? Anybody had the... There was music. I mean, you know, there was just, you know, early 2000s trap music playing in the background. Yes. <laughs> so, back to you saying that, too, like, that's... Give me... You, from 2011, you've been capturing photography. Yeah, Have you captured any ratchet shit on... On camera? Not on camera, but no. the closest that could probably come to that was probably a car chase, which I happen to just be coming across, you know. And it's crazy because it goes back to the blue line tool. I happen to be riding and <laughs> I'm going home, minding my own business, and I see all these helicopters by Firestone. And I said, okay. Oh, Firestone. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's Firestone. The, that's stop, too. That's, that's it's stop right there, there. By Central. You know. So I yeah. said, oh, I said, I'm about to get off on Firestone, see what's going on. So. So sometimes you just be hopping off? Yeah. That's funny. And I, you know, stroll down Firestone, Central, truck go speeding by, and it's like about 
10 cop cars chasing after Dang. it. And this fool was going in circles, so I got video of it. It was it was just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when they do that. I sometimes I'm like, are they doing it for entertainment? Because we know how all those end, the chasing. Right, exactly. <laughs> they want to make it on the big Putting screen. Putting on the show. <laughs> yeah, before they go out. <laughs> They're like, you know what, before I go out, I got to right. put on the show. So you take um, your camera everywhere with you? Yeah, I take my camera everywhere where I go because I never know. In your if, backpack, right? Yeah, Because you can't backpack. walk with that shit around oh, here. Oh, no. no. De- <laughs> definitely not, especially on the east side. I wouldn't be walking around with that out. Mm-mm. So what are some things you say you do that a lot? You, you 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 talk things into existence. When did you start doing When did you feel that that was working out for you? That I felt like that was working out for me late 2018 going into 2019 because before that, you know, what I was saying earlier is how I would, was realizing that I wasn't really planning things out. So what I would basically do is uh, write down in a notebook the shoots that I have, the ideas that I have, and then if the vision that I had didn't work out, I would put another vision in the place to see if that one worked out. Nice. Yeah, and it does. You know, the other day I accidentally bought um, a $30 planner at Target. You know, Target just be getting you. Right. <laughs> it was in the wrong section. I said, oh, $15 not bad, and it's a little nice leather one. And I just be, they be scanning, I just be like, whatever, right? I don't be right, checking here. I'm like, really whatever. Be yeah, not to say I got money, but I don't be checking. So, uh, because... I just don't. So I was walking out, and I feel like Target is the only place that made me look at my receipt twice. Like, I'd be like, what the fuck did right. I buy? What did I just come I got out 10 with? items, and it's about $1,000. So I checked, and my planner was $30 for a fucking planner. <laughs> I was so mad, but... I was like, fuck it, because I got this. Like, now I got to write everything in there. I got to write my children's name, the wedding, everything in that planner. But right. I noticed that I do write my shit down now. And before I was would say, like, no, like, I'm very free-spirited. Like, we go on the mic and we have a conversation, which is cool because that's how I keep, like, my unique, uh-huh. real, raw-ass <laughs> shit. But at the same time, like, it can... I've had shit lead up to an hour and a half. And then there I am stuck trying to edit. And I hate end up getting pissed because it's too much. Right. But it's like when I start organizing it, like when I send you notes and I've done it previously with another guest, we'd be done in like 30 minutes and we get all the good shit. Yeah, you And it's like, and then you just edit and it's easy. So it's like planning has made my life easier. And even though I thought I didn't need it. Yes. You know I mean? Especially with photography, you feel like, oh, you see it, you capture it. But planning for you helped you a lot. Yeah, and sometimes what happens, like you were saying about the planner, sometimes we run into situations that, you know, are teachable. And then, you know, and we think about it later, like, oh, it was meant for me to have this. And in your situation with the planner, it was meant for you to have that. You, you think know, them $30? Not the $30, but... <laughs> You hey, know. that planner better put in work. That right, planner better give real. me a real job. No, exactly. Um, they better give me where I need to be. But <laughs> I definitely feel it is funny because people will look at you like you're crazy. Like, oh, you got to speak into existence. You got to say, I'm going to. And people will look at you like you're crazy. Right. But when you see that shit happening, like when I write this shit down, like I get to cross out that I interviewed old school mentality. You get me? Like I right. get to cross that cross out, out. And that is like a. <laughs> Like, and it is just for myself and you, for you to see too. It's like, you brought your ass out here and I brought my ass here. You get me? And that means a lot to me. Crossing that out, it's like, you said what you was going to do and you got it done and it feels great. Because sometimes when you just say it, a friend was telling me like, when you keep saying it and then you get it done, you feel, it doesn't feel that great because you feel like it's been due. Right. It's past due. But when you write it, it's different. When you say it, like write it and put it in, in a, and you jot it down, it becomes a little more, I don't yeah. know. It hits different and it's yeah. personal to you. Yeah, because valuable. even when you're writing it, you feel like it could happen. I need to do it. Right. So when it do happen, it does feel great to see that you once wrote it. It's that kind of scene like, sometimes I'm like, damn, I should have wrote a journal when I was younger to see where my mind was at and where I'm at now. I did the same thing when I was growing up. I wrote a journal and, you know, I wrote, you know, all these different things that I wanted to do when I was in like ninth or 10th grade. You and, have that? And not on me, but when uh, I looked no, at yeah. it. Yeah. But when I looked at it, you know, a few days ago, I said, dang, I said, from the time that I wrote that in 2011 to about 2020, I'm like, it's a blessing how many things I've been able to speak into existence, the learning experiences that I've had. And the growth and the opportunities that have come with it. Yeah. That's dope. That's so dope. I I honestly, you're honorable. 
you you you're doing it and it feels good like i said to see that you're not that far from me you know everybody that i try to interview sometimes it feels it feels crazy when it's almost like people from from home right, right. i hit, i let you know how long it take it take you to get here he said 10 minutes and it's like it feels good it feels like my neighbor it's like my neighbors here making it you know and it's like it, it it's amazing jay and good yeah, for you it's a blessing and we rooted for you everybody supporting you like i said is your your following is really really you're really engaged for with them and i think they love you like and you're doing it Definitely. and we're gonna ride with you we're gonna ride with you and i'm i have nothing else to tell you because you're doing everything like other than I, you have you have everything you even the way yeah. you say your things like you already know what you got you like you said you speaking into existence and you you already know where you're going so i got nothing else to tell you but keep going and we supporting you your, your city Definitely. your hood is supporting you i appreciate all y'all you know shout out to all y'all don't stop doing what you're doing keep on doing it can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, that's right. All right, Jay, anything else you feel I, I didn't add or you want to add? We got all the time in the world. If you want to add anything you feel we didn't cover. Just some shout-outs. Go ahead. Shout-out to my boy Classic Brand. Shout-out to Little Spice. <laughs> shout-out to uh, Saya. Shout-out to Monique. Shout-out to my mom. And last but not least, shout-out to God. Uh, the is the only way is up. Yeah, that's right. We're going to end it right there. The only way is up. Jay, thank you again. It means a lot. No problem. It's an honor. No, it's an honor having you. <laughs> like I said, um, black and brown coming together like always. You already know how that go. And I feel that more than anything, I people need to start seeing it as just people. You feel me? Like, exactly. yes, black and brown. But, like, just start recognizing that we all in the same boat. Like, you know, I, I feel, I'm sure if you were to go through some shit, just like a human, you will feel, I will feel your pain, you will feel my pain. Right. Because we're humans at the end of the day. And we're we're pushing, we're coming from the same place trying to get it, similar struggles, you know? Exactly. And we got to stick together. We, gotta we stick got together. this, we're going to make it to the top, Jay. The only way is up. The only way is up. All right, thank you again. Don't ever forget, y'all, this is your girl, Nessa Nandez. Jay, where can they find you? Old school mentality, old school underscore mentality. That's right, we signing out. <laughs> Sign it off.